Welcome back, everyone, to Open Line. We are talking about how would a guaranteed basic income work in Nashville or work here in the United States? What What is it? And, and how would it work? And we have three guests, all with the Nashville Economic Justice Alliance, who are joining us via Zoom to discuss this. Um, and we're gonna start taking calls. We kind of set the table with the first uh, part of the show here, and let's just go to the phones now. Let's go to Ron. Hello, Ron. Yes, sir. Go right ahead. Uh, just a few basic things. Man, I love what y'all like to do, what, you know, the whole point of it, but, I'm a simple-minded person, if you'll bear with me. Uh, if you go to the parks and stuff, it says don't feed the wildlife, you know, and that's the reason being because they need to fend for themselves. Um, the next thing I got is, you know, there's jobs out there. Uh, back when the pandemic hit and everybody got the stimulus, I went into Walmart, and it really shocked me. I was looking at the TVs, and there wasn't any TVs. Well, I guess everybody spent their money on TVs. <laughs> Uh, I see people walking around with no car and a hundred, you know, or a thousand dollar cell phones. Uh, the next statement is: I think everybody needs to watch. It's a it's a movie based. It's on the back when the New World come about. You know, the movie come over here from England. Uh, it's called the New World. Uh, they didn't get anything. There was nothing given. The only thing they had to depend on was the Lord and them working for themselves. You know, I think if you spoil people, they're not going to want to work. It's, you know, that's pretty much the, what I got to say. Uh, love everybody and thank you for listening to me. Well, Ron, you're not alone. Um, all right. I, I, he put that in an interesting way. If you spoil people, they're not going to want to work. Um, you heard all of Ron's concerns i know again he's not alone who wants to who wants to talk to ron here lois go ahead yes i i really appreciate ron's uh, call and i re appreciate uh ron's um observations and his interpretations of the observations and that's one of the things that we were sharing a little earlier is that people have been investigating to see how this does work because we know that's a concern. If people won't work, they, you know, we'll spoil them or they'll spend the money uh, in ways that aren't helpful for themselves. But we find that that's not true. I heard my brother give us a blessing and talking about the Lord's provision. You know, I know for a, a, for a fact that the scriptures talk so much about helping the people who are poor. There are really people who are poor and working two and three jobs who are not getting ahead because they do not make enough money. So we're really talking about identifying people who have a very real need for some additional support that they are not getting through their labor. And the idea would be to get them to a place where they then can um, even assist others and then be able to function more independently and invest their money and even, you know, not even have to need uh, an additional support. Okay. All right. And so, yeah, you reject the idea that um, if, if you give people money, they won't work. You, you, you feel like um, maybe it gives them more freedom to go out and find a, a job they want to do or, or something to that effect. But, but what about that concern? Now you name. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it's, no, I'm sorry. I think it's wonderful you actually said that because you find out a lot of people have what we call a J-O-B, that they actually hate. It's a drug dream. Sometimes it's a form of slavery. And if people even had a little bit more freedom, then they could literally create their own businesses. I think the thing I would speak to now is we have to be very careful about the stereotypes. That's how we get into the isms, you know, all people are like this. Poor people are like this. Black people are like this. White people are like this. We, that, so I think we need to investigate, investigate that type of thinking and be open to what we're learning that doesn't fit those models. And in this case, we know people do not, there are a lot of people who do not have enough livelihood to support their families. And we want to offer something that can help the poor as the scriptures speak to. Is it realistic to eliminate poverty? It's a noble goal. Is it a realistic goal? Well, we think it's realistic to try. Um, 
with the level of poverty that is currently being experienced, you know, there are a lot, there are a lot of people who actually have jobs, but still are living in poverty based on this minimum wage that we often hear about. That's just not enough money to make ends meet. So, so the notion that not giving them um, adequate basic income will therefore force them to work. Well, that's already being proven. Uh, people are working and they're still living in poverty, which is why this guaranteed basic income idea is has gone global um, because of the increasing economic widening gap that, that we're all seeing in this country. Um, and also, we know that the pandemic has made a lot of people reevaluate how they spend their monies, um, how we address poverty, how we address hunger, because now people have faced it for themselves, many for the yeah. first time. So yeah. it doesn't take a whole lot of um, uh, natural disasters for any of us, you know, any of us could be in the same situation. And so the idea of having a basic uh, economic flooring so that you can therefore at least feed your family, you know, I think it's worth um, certainly our best efforts. Okay. All right. And we mentioned this. Stim well, yeah, go ahead. Oh. I'm being told we have to take a break, but go ahead. And then Leonardo say was on the line. I'm going to take Leonardo after this break, I promise. But, but go ahead. No, I was going to say, just think about the example of the stimulus check. I don't, maybe a few people have rejected it, but the whole notion is that we all have been impacted by something that has caused our incomes to be less. And when I say everybody, that didn't true, get true for some people, but nobody's, we're not complaining about that. The point is we're helping those who need it. And the stimulus check is an example of that in terms of three times we've been able to offer people some relief and support. Right. You can, you can see the stimulus uh, checks as, as kind of a jumping off point here. Um, it actually is. Uh, yeah, for, for this debate. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll take a break. Leonardo, it, thank you for holding, and, and I'm going to get to your call right after this. If you want to call in, there's the number. Take a break. Be back right after this.